49ers mailbag coming at you on the 49ers report by Chat Sports. I am Chase Senior. Be sure to hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at Chase underscore Senior. I love interacting with the Niner gang. Let's get to this question from Luke Luna, $5 Super Chat. How pumped are you on Elijah Mitchell? I'm all the way up on him as a dark horse running back with Mostert and Sermon. Luke, I think Elijah Mitchell has a really good opportunity to make the roster. It was somewhat surprising to see the 49ers draft two running backs, and I think they drafted two because they realized the value of Elijah Mitchell in the sixth round was way too good to pass up. Here's what I want you all to look out for. So Elijah Mitchell at Louisiana played less than 50 games. And in that career, he had less than 50 receptions. But the big takeaway coming out of OTAs and rookie minicamp so far is Elijah Mitchell's ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. So while the coaching staff at Louisiana didn't really utilize him as a pass-catching running back, you know what Kyle Shanahan likes to do with his running backs? gets them involved in the passing game. If Elijah Mitchell is able to show he has that versatility, running the football, passing the football as well, I think he could make this roster. And with Trey Sermon, I do think the 49ers could have a really, really solid young elite running back core. The Schmoo, 808. Let's go faithful. Let's go Niners Nation. That is right. Bang, bang, Niner gang. Let's go faithful. Niners Nation is funny because a lot of people don't like when you refer to the Niners as Niners Nation. I've kind of gotten ripped in the comments before, but the Schmoo 808, we appreciate you. Let's move on to this question from Deborah F3. Name a player you think the 49ers could be interested in trading for during the season. It's been a lot of trade speculation and trade buzz over the last several months, really dating back to the 2020 season, hovering around Philadelphia Eagles tight end Zach Ertz. He's entering the last year of his contract. He has been looking for a trade partner for a long time because the Eagles allowed him that responsibility to kind of just seek out trade partners. And the Eagles really haven't been able to find one because they don't have much value. Now, here are a couple things that I think are pretty valuable. Zach Ertz is only 30 years old. And prior to last season, for like five, six years, he was one of the best tight ends in the NFL after George Kittle as well as Travis Kelsey. It's the best Eagles tight end in franchise history. And he's making less than $10 million. So that is a player who I'd like to trade for. And if you can get a deal done where you give up a fourth or fifth round pick to the Eagles in exchange for Zach Ertz, I would do it in a heartbeat. I personally would like to see Kyle Shanahan go with more two tight end sets and trot out more 12 personnel. I think it makes the uh, offense more dangerous. I think it makes them a little less predictable. And to have both of those guys as pass catching options, uh, I think it could really take this 49ers offense to a different level. So I'm going to go ahead and say Zach Ertz. What do you all think? Is there a player you want the 49ers to trade for this season? Give me some names in the comment section down below. Want to get to this question from Horacio Flores. After Jeff Wilson's injury, who do you think wins the halfback two spot? Okay, we're going halfback now. Old school football talk. I'm all about it because I'm a football guy. So, yeah, difficult question because there are so many running backs on this roster. So let's go ahead and say that Raheem Mostert is going to be RB1, right? And let's just factor out Jeff Wilson in this conversa conversation because he's going to be out for the next four to six months. Wayne Gallman, Trey Sermon, Elijah Mitchell, Jamichael Hasty, all of those guys are basically able now to compete for the halfback two spot. Who do I see rising up to the occasion and taking it? Wayne Gallman was, I think, one of the most underrated signings in NFL free agency this past offseason. To get him at less than $1 million in his mid-20s after the way that he replaced Saquon Barkley with the New York Giants last year, and also he can catch the ball out of the backfield, I thought the value there was insane. So there's a group of guys who could get the RB2 spot. Noah Pena, my homie, for 20-piece chicken nuggets, $5. <laughs> Thank you, Noah Pena. Appreciate that. I know producer Sam Brown, he likes his chicken nuggets. So the spicy ones at that. So Noah Pena, he just fed producer Sam Brown tonight. Appreciate that, Noah Pena. You're the man. Thank you, Noah. Sam Brown chiming in. Appreciate you. 
Tucker, I'm not even going to try to say that last name. I apologize, but it's really difficult, and I don't want to look like a fool. How much will Warner's New Deal be? So according to Ian Rappaport, it's really fascinating to me because I do like the logistics of contracts and seeing what the money comes down to. Also, another thing, the NFL salary cap is going to balloon next season. So that will allow the 49ers to pay up and allow Fred Warner to secure the bag. Here's what you have to look for. Darius Leonard, who was also drafted in 2018 in the second round, Fred Warner was drafted in the third round, is going to get paid by the Indianapolis Colts. And two of these guys have been two of the best linebackers, off-ball linebackers across the NFL. If Darius Leonard gets around $18 million, which is the price tag that Bobby Wagner of the Seattle Seahawks demanded, that is going to set the market. And if Darius Leonard gets paid $18 million, Fred Warner and his agent are going to want to get paid $18 million. A lot of you watching might say, that is quarterback money. No way. With the NFL salary cap going up next season, I think it is totally doable and worth it to pay Fred Warner around in the neighborhood of $18 million. This guy is a game wrecker and a game breaker. So one of those players is going to set the market. Who is it going to be? Fred Warner, Darius Leonard, whichever one gets paid first because they were both drafted in 2018 and their new contracts are on the horizon, look out for that. Talent chiming in. Do you think we should attempt to bring Quan Alexander on a cheap deal instead of Brandon Marshall? Quan Alexander recovering from a torn Achilles. Uh, 49ers fans obviously very familiar with him. They traded him away to the New Orleans Saints last year during a deadline deal, and he tore his Achilles with New Orleans, was barely able to play. I really like Quan Alexander. He's not going to be able to be available until like maybe the midway point of the season, best case scenario. Obviously, with medical advances, torn Achilles, not as serious as they used to be, but it's just like kind of like pick one or the other. Quan Alexander is 26 years old. Brandon Marshall is 31 and hasn't played since 2018. So let me ride with Quan Alexander talent, possibly. But that torn Achilles kind of concerns me and he wouldn't be available for a little while. Next question coming from Bonnie N. Bosa. You're going to visit any games live? I would love to. I mean, that would be a blast. I have not been to Levi Stadium. Obviously, it's a new stadium in Santa Clara. Hey, I mean, talk to the chat sports bosses, Bonnie, and tell them that they should fly me out for a 49ers game live this year. We can even do a live broadcast from Levi Stadium and have a bunch of fun with it. I'll shotgun beers with you. We'll talk 49ers football. It would be a blast. And the 49ers expecting a packed house later this fall. It's going to be live. It's going to be lit. And if I can be there, you already know it's going down. Be sure you're subscribed to the 49ers Report for the best 49ers coverage here on YouTube and help get us to 36,000 subscribers. It was my goal this week to hit 36K subs. Help us do so right now. We are currently at 35,628. And if you're not subscribed yet and you're like, why should I? There are other 49ers channels out there. Well, first of all, this is the best. And also, it's completely free, and we're giving you 49ers videos every single day. So you see that link at the bottom of your screen? Go to youtube.com slash 49ers TV, or hit that big red button down below and subscribe to the 49ers Report so I can continue to keep my job here at Chat Sports. The RMB bros, a third, fifth, and a seventh for Julio. Keep up the great work. I appreciate that. Thank you for watching, as always. I don't even know if that gets it done. I mean, if it gets to the point where the Falcons are completely desperate and Julio Jones is like, I am not coming back flat out. I'd rather sit out the season than play again for the Atlanta Falcons, which I kind of feel bad for Atlanta Falcons fans to see arguably the best player in franchise history go on undisputed and just say, I'm out of there. I think the Falcons are going to be able to get a second and or a third, a first round is somewhat steep. If it, if the Falcons get desperate, the RMB bros, as we kind of pop up this trade idea to simplify it for you, possibly. I'd say the chances of this happening, 30%. And if I'm wrong, I will Venmo you $5. How about that? So I don't see this trade going through. I think the Falcons want a little bit more for a guy who's made it to seven Pro Bowls and has been the best player in that franchise's history. But 
crazier things have happened. And if I'm wrong on this, the RMB bros, I'll Venmo you five dollars. Andrew Gonzalez, what do you think our record will be this season if Trey Lance plays all 17 games? Did a roster prediction back a couple weeks ago once the schedules were released. Keep in mind here, because some people haven't grasped this yet. It is going to be a 17-game, 18-week schedule in 2021. We've never seen this before. In my roster prediction, what did I say? 12 and five, the over-under set by the odds makers is at 10 and a half. So I'm gonna go 12 and five for the 49ers. But I'm actually interested to see what everybody else is thinking, how you're feeling. You think the 49ers are playoff bound? You think they're Super Bowl bound? If so, they're competing in a really difficult division where they're gonna have to win 10, 11, 12 games. So for this 17 game schedule coming up in 2021, Predict the 49ers record here in 2021 in the comment section below. Do the easy math, add the wins up and the losses up. The final number equals 17. Let me know in the comment section below. And I'm not ragging you if you're bad at math because in college, I failed elementary algebra. I'm really bad at it. But if I can figure it out, you can as well. Let's talk some 49ers on social media. I'm somewhat new to the 49ers report. I think this is my fourth live show. So for the more than 300 people watching us live here on the 49ers report on YouTube as well as Facebook, hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at Chase underscore senior. It's the same handle for both. I've had a bunch of you slide into my DMs to either welcome me to the 49ers report, ask me question about the Niners, or just talk about life. You can do so too, and I guarantee you, promise you, I will answer those messages. It's at Chase underscore senior on Instagram and Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, the links for my Twitter and Instagram profile are in the description down below. Let's move on to this question from Cody Carp. Chase, if I do a $25 super chat, will you wear a 49er shirt next episode? Obviously, I mean, come on, $25 super chat, hell yeah. And if it's a $30 super chat on this edition of the 49ers report, I will shotgun a beer for you. So how about that deal? $30 super chat because I like to negotiate here. I will wear a 49ers shirt next episode. And on today's show, I will do a shotgun. How about that? I see a couple of super chats coming in. Let's do a $30 super chat, Cody Carp. I will shotgun a beer on today's show which is bold because I've barely eaten today. And on the next 49ers report, I will be wearing a 49ers shirt. Another super chat coming in from Luke Luna. Chase Sr., you're a stud. And if I ever, and if I'm ever in Salt Lake City, Utah, let's give you a tattoo on me. Niners, let's go. Hashtag 49ers. That's awesome. Now, we, we popped up a 49ers man cave photo from Nephi earlier. He lives in Salt Lake City, Utah. If you live in Salt Lake City, Utah as well, and I'm ever there, we can kick it, myself, Luke, as well as Nephi, and a free tattoo. I don't know if I can deny that and turn that down. I mean, I like to get crazy. I like to be bold and go hard. So let's ride. I mean, let's do it. Thank you for the super chat. And also, here's a picture of Nephi Isaac's Niners Man Cave that we featured earlier on our live show. If you're just catching it right now, Nephi Isaac balling out in Utah with this 49ers man cave. If you have a picture of your 49ers man cave and you want to send it to me at Chase underscore senior on Twitter and Instagram, the same at that Luke Luna hit up right there. Scion, one player on the 49ers roster that most fans sleep on. Ooh, that's a really good question. I mean... Is it Jason Verrett? I think across the NFL, people are like, oh my gosh, this guy's been so injury riddled, right? And he's been a bust since coming out of TCU. He was so good early on in his Chargers career, but unfortunately, injuries really zapped him. Last year, we saw the potential that he has. I couldn't believe that given how well he played last year, when I think he only gave up one touchdown in pass coverage, that he only came back on a one-year deal worth, what, five-plus million dollars? I'd say Jason Verrett. Maybe I'm just out of touch with saying he slept on, but I think across the NFL, Jason Verrett has slept on a little bit. I think when healthy, he's one of the top corners in the NFL. 
Let's get to this question from Talon. Do you think a Richard Sherman return can possibly ruin the development of Ambry Thomas and or Diamador Lenore? I've seen some people say that in some articles. I think that's a little bit of a reach. Richard Sherman is a multi-time Pro Bowler, a multi-time All-Pro. He's already won a Super Bowl and is one of the best cornerbacks in the history of the game. He's going to be rocking a Hall of Fame jacket when it's all said and done. So if you're bringing in a future Hall of Famer, how is that going to ruin the development of Ambry Thomas and Diamador Lenore? I'm going to go on the other side of that argument and say Richard Sherman being able to teach and instill the way of life in the NFL game as well as Hall of Fame-like techniques would be great for Ambry Thomas and Diamador Lenore and actually help them progress in their NFL careers. J-Bats, thoughts on targeting Brian Poole to our cornerback depth. Verrett's health is iffy and cap went up and we can afford it. So, I mean, the cap goes up next year. The cap number for this year has not gone up. And yeah, Jason Verrett's health, as I just mentioned, somewhat of a concern, right? There's no doubt about that. I don't know if I bring in Brian Poole. I, maybe I'd rather go Richard Sherman instead. I think the 49ers secondary is in a pretty solid spot. But Brian Poole, hey, you know, pretty solid player, 28 years old. Look at his numbers from 2020, 44 tackles, two interceptions, seven pass breakups. Pretty solid production right there. And also, you know, if you bring him in, you still get some decent years with him being 28. But I don't see the 49ers pulling the trigger on a deal like that.